I'll kill for fame. I'll kill for it. You might have heard people say this, but you don't really think that they mean it. But Dr. James Marion Sims meant every word. He literally tore black women apart to make it to the top and is recognized as an American hero. His beliefs, which are still being taught, are the reason why black women are about four times more likely to die in a medical facility today. How though? And how'd he get away with this? Short answer, he's white. Long answer, well get ready to say what the f throughout this whole video. Failure, embarrassment, stupid. These were the words thrown at James Marion Sims. The year is 1832 and young thirsty James is trying to get to the cheeks by becoming a doctor. J. Marion Sims' dad wanted him to become a lawyer, but Sims had a crush on a doctor's niece and thought, how am I gonna get close to Shorty and give her this mediocre meat? Then boom. Yo! He thought, I'm gonna work in medicine as an assistant to this girl's uncle so I can slide in the cootie coo. And that did happen, just not in the way you're thinking. I'll tell you about that in a bit. Eventually, Teresa, the woman he was crushing on, became his girlfriend. And he even got his medical degree in 1835. Yo, tell me a woman isn't powerful, cause you will be lying. The problem was, he didn't only want to smash. James really wanted to be praised and be loaded with money. I actually wonder what his astrology sign is. I wonder if he's a Leo. I don't wanna, I don't wanna ruin this for Leos. Anyways, I'm gonna, I'm gonna add it somewhere. <laughs> He even said, I felt no particular interest in my profession at the beginning of it, apart from making a living. He goes on to explain how he really just wanted mad money. He returns home and his dad is upset because James chose to work in medicine rather than following his dad's plan, which was to become a rich lawyer. Because not only was it a problem that he didn't like medicine, people weren't getting paid a lot to work in medicine. So now his girlfriend was dealing with a- She said, you a broke boy? I think she's saying, I'm a broke boy. So he's like, damn, should I explore my options to find a good job that I like? Or should I start a medical practice even though I have no idea what I'm doing because I have no experience, so I'ma play with people's lives, kill a few babies, and torture a few humans until I get it right. And that's when J. Marion Sims opened up his new death dungeon. I mean medical practice. Fresh out of college. Fresh out of university. That was for my British followers. Like, <laughs> that sounded good, right? Like. Yo, I was starting to sound mad British, like, I'm not even saying my T's like how I used to. I used to say my T's like D's, now nah, nah, I don't even say them. Anyways, that medical practice ended up shutting down real quick after his first two patients, who were infants, died under his care. James Sims built a bad reputation. The community basically thought, if you go to that medical practice, the only way you'll leave is in a body bag. So he wasn't getting any clients. Jay Sims was looked at as the town loser, and he couldn't take it anymore. He was now an even bigger failure in his new town. So he packed up his bags and decided to move again. This time to the middle of nowhere in Alabama. This is when his life changed. Bitch, you think it's small. We need to be thinking big. Think big, bitch. Jay Sims married Teresa and started thinking big. He thought, who could I experiment on without getting any backlash if I end up killing them? And it hit him. Black people. He became a plantation physician. In the most scary way possible, he would work on patients who were cross-eyed, had club feet, and cleft palates. Sims was also known for prying apart slave kids' skulls to try and expand the skull because he believed the black people were stupid and he blamed this on thinking that black people had smaller skulls. He did all of this without anesthesia, which is that thing that doctors make you take to numb the pain so you won't really feel everything. When patients died because of his scary surgeries, he'd blame it on the ignorance of their black mothers. Like, how do you even come to that? He really didn't see himself as the problem at all. The scary thing was that James Marion Sims was now getting so much practice. He was making his own homemade medical tools and had so much freedom when experimenting. But there was a big problem. He wasn't getting rich, meaning he still seemed like a loser in his eyes and he wasn't getting the money his dad dreamt of him making. 
So he moved again to Montgomery, Alabama in 1840. He built a hospital called the Surgical Infirmary for Negroes. And no, he did not care about them black people. He simply wanted to use their bodies to get money out of it. The slave owners also didn't care about those black people. They really wanted whatever was slowing down their slaves to be fixed so they could continue doing slave work. Having a slave with a medical issue meant less work was going to get done by the slave, which meant less profit for the slave master. Sims was finally seeing money because the slave market was Booming. Slaves made up two thirds of the population in Montgomery, Alabama. A big reason for this was because slave masters were forcing slaves to pop out babies. At this time, the US stopped the importation of slaves, so the way to get more slaves was to make black women have more kids. Even US founding father Thomas Jefferson said, I consider a woman who brings in a child every two years more profitable than the best man on the farm. I really want to connect this push on why black women were having so many kids to what society wants black women to do now, but I don't want to make this video too long. So let me know if you want me to make a video on society's effect on black people having kids then versus now. So with all these slaves, Sims was getting shmoney, but he wasn't getting fame. In a nearby town, a slave named Lucy had a traumatic experience giving birth. Little did Lucy or Sims know that soon they'd change each other's lives forever. I had to cut right here because did you know that I dropped these sexy items? Make sure you cop a stereotype shirt or some of my other merch in my shop at cutbycrystal.com. It's linked below. Also, get involved in this video. Drop a comment and tell me your thoughts. Go like and subscribe too. I'm trying to reach 10K subscribers so I could get more important messages out. And you know you wanna see more of my face, come on. <laughs> All right, back to the episode. If there was anything I hated, it was investigating the organs of the female pelvis, J. Marion Sims. It was seen as a disgrace if you worked in medicine to help women, but Sims saw an opportunity. There was a lot of money in this market. The medical industry was dismissing over half of the population, females. Sims went on a mission to figure out how to treat medical issues dealing with the female anatomy. Today, we call this gynecology. Sims saw a possible ticket to the big bucks and he continued with his same strategy, experiment on slaves. One day, Lucy's slave master rushed in to speak with Sims. He basically tells Sims that Lucy keeps peeing on herself and this started happening after she gave birth. He's like, she can't even work because she's making a mess and is in pain. Make this problem go away. Sims is like, I bet. This condition was called vesicovaginal fistula, a condition that damages a female's insides, especially the bladder, vagina, and cervix. And it leaves a hole that makes their pee leak. And in some cases, poop as well. It doesn't lead to death, but it's embarrassing and hard to live with since, you know, as soon as the pee would form, it would constantly leak out of their body. It can also cause irritation. This meant the value of the slave and their work went down and it's scary for the slave as well because there was a chance that their master might get rid of them permanently. So 18 year old Lucy was sent to Sims. I'm thinking she was probably scared but also a bit hopeful since she was going to see a doctor who claimed he'd fix her. Sims created a tool called the Sims Vaginal Speculum and he was excited to put it to work. He had her bend over and he rammed the tool inside it snipped away inside of her area. Remember, he was doing all of this without anesthesia, so she felt everything. The reason why he was doing this was because he believed that black people don't feel pain like white people do, so they can handle it. Also, he simply did not like people who were black. Lucy was in extreme pain, to the point where she was certain she would die. Sims even said he thought Lucy would die, but she didn't. Instead, she suffered from a blood infection due to him leaving a sponge inside of her body since she was bleeding so much. He treated the infection but never fixed it, and she didn't even get her fistula fixed either. Instead of her being sent back to her slave master, Jay Sims kept her in his backyard hut where he would gather 12 other main slaves he'd operate on. There were many slaves he'd operate on, but this was his main group. He only named three of those slaves, Lucy, Betsy, and Anarka. And if you thought Lucy's story was the worst, oof, 
You are wrong, my friend. Betsy was next up on the operating table. At this point, Sims had a crew of white male medical professionals who wanted to watch the process. When they saw the torture the girls went through, even the other doctors were like, you're taking this way too far. One by one, the doctors would leave and want nothing to do with this. They couldn't bear to see that level of pain as Sims instructed them to hold the patients down while he operated. The doctors were also drained from the long work hours. Sims was failing left and right, and his patients kept ending up in worse conditions. The doctors were like, I quit. Sadly for the slaves, they couldn't quit. It was bad, especially for a 17 year old slave named Anarka, who would soon change his life and probably yours too. Once again, Sims was feeling like a failure. He was now losing money and respect. He already operated on Anarka 29 times and had the slave step in as his medical assistant because all of the white medical crew left him. The slaves would take turns holding each other down during the operations. That breaks my heart. Anarka was one of the main girls he'd experiment on and this torture lasted about four years. It got to her 30th surgery and she was really, who knows if she wanted to live or die at this point? Like, what would you want at this point? Drop a comment. Anarka was held down by the other slaves and again, Sims would cut and sew the insides of her while poking through with his device. This time, it actually worked. But you won't believe what Sims did with the slaves after. I'll tell you in a bit. James Marion Sims hit his goal of fame and fortune. He was the first person to successfully treat fiscula. Sims was awarded the title, the father of gynecology. He opened up the first hospital for women in 1855 and treated white women, where he gave them anesthesia to numb the pain, something the black women never received. He became the president of the American Medical Association and in 1880, he became the president of the American Gynecological Society. Sims was even awarded numerous statues of himself across America, one even in Central Park, across from the New York Academy of Medicine. Until recently, when a group of young black activists shut that sh down. Here's how and why they did it. Sims' beliefs directly linked to the high death rates of black women under medical care. African American mothers dying at a higher rate than any other racial or ethnic group. What was supposed to be the start of a new life turned out to be the end of another. 26 year old Amber. Rose Isaac was preparing to give birth. I just remember staring and you know looking at her face and then and, and seeing how scared she was. And so I'm telling her, yeah, we're going home. This is what we prepared for. And she looked at me and said, yes, all three of us are going home. And that was the last time I seen Amber. Also, 26-year-old Shah Asia Washington died during an emergency C-section. Yolanda Kadima, a doula and mom of seven, died giving birth to twins. Experts say the struggles these women face throughout their pregnancies and childbirth all come down to racism. Some people today say Sims' actions were acceptable back then, but no, even back then it was seen as extremely brutal. It was not acceptable back then. We just did not hear from the people who protested against it. The belief that black women don't feel the same pain as white women exists today and is even being taught in schools. It's very likely that your current doctor learned these beliefs. I even remember my textbook saying that black people exaggerated their pain levels. This leads people to believe that black people, including black kids, lie when they say they're in pain. A popular education company called Pearson recently had to apologize for their racist stereotypes that they put in their textbooks. I'm not sure how big Pearson is in other countries, but if you went to school in the States, then you probably had Pearson textbooks. This belief is the reason why the death rate when delivering a baby is 12.7 for white females and 43.5 for black females per 100,000 live births, meaning black females are three to four times more likely to die of pregnancy-related deaths than white females. Studies show that people of color receive much lower quality of care than white people, even if they have the same medical insurance and pay the same amount for medical care. It's even explained more in Harriet A. Washington's book, Medical Apartheid, which talks about racism in medicine. We are passing laws now 
that actually erode informed consent, that reduce people's right to say yes or no. And when we do that, African Americans are often the most frequent victims of that. Do you personally know a black person that wasn't taken seriously when being seen by a doctor? Share your story in the comments. I've had a few experiences, and also, it's on the news that even celebrities experience this, like Serena Williams and even Beyonce. Now about that statue. People were mad that this dude's statue was up in Central Park, so they did something about it. A group called the Black Youth Project 100 held a protest in front of the Sim statue in New York City. They wore hospital gowns splashed with red paint dripping down their legs and spread the hidden history of J. Sims to thousands of people on social media. This put heat on the mayor of New York, Bill de Blasio, because they basically said, so what you gonna do, Bill? You gonna get this out of here or not? It's not about the past, it's about what it means to the future. So Bill and the New York City Public Design Commission held a 90-day review of the various monuments all over New York. And by the end of the review, they voted to move that dusty statue to Greenwood Cemetery in Brooklyn where Sims is buried. You think that was a good move? Leave your thoughts in the comments. There's a much better monument called the Anarka, Lucy, and Betsy Monument in Montgomery, Alabama that honors their contribution to medicine. And now they've been nicknamed the Mothers of Gynecology. Let me know if you'd visit this monument. So how crazy would it be if you never saw my face again? Whoa. Hit that subscribe button to stay connected and to learn more. Don't forget to like as well if you learned something new. It tells YouTube to push this video out to more people who need to see this. Also, YouTube recommends that you check out this episode. So I'll see you there.